Sure. So uh, this week's topic is really, um, you know, we were thinking about games, Excel games, and games in general. And I just wanted to, to hear your thoughts on the process of, of learning through developing a game. So this is a very interesting approach um, that, that Carey had, which was, uh, which was to use his class, you know, and to, to help, uh, to use what he was learning to build a game which is also interesting because he probably had to turn in homework and didn't get graded on the game and made this awesome game, too, on the side. So, <laughs> um, But really, I, I want to talk about the use of games and learning. And not only um, do we have to... We don't have to just talk about it in terms of Excel, um, learning Excel, but also when you... If you do workshops, I mean, do you use games um, in your workshops to help people learn? So what is the effect of, of gaming and learning in your experience? So we can start with Carrie. So, yeah, so, I mean, for me, I've been involved now on the gamification side of things, so particularly the gamification of education. Um, and this is actually a phenomenal trend that I'm really, I'm really supportive of. Um, so you see this being applied right now in primary schools where, you know, instead of assigning homework um, to, to children, we don't, rather than calling it homework and having that negative association, um, we're assigning quests, right? And so, you know, this quest has 50 math problems in it. And there's a, you know, leveling treadmill and rewards and things of that nature. And so the, the kids are actually into it and they, they get motivated from it, which is great from the, the, the kid's standpoint, but also from the teacher's standpoint, it's really good um, because we get access to all of this great data. Right, so we can tell if a if a student is having a problem in a very specific area in math, for example, maybe we need to spend a little bit more time with that student um, to to hone those skills, um, as well as getting access to um, you know to to other relevant data such as how much time each child spends doing homework and doing problems in which they you know, find to be their favorite problems. It's it's really good at getting engagement in a time when people have short attention spans. It's well put. So have you always been um, kind of a, I don't want to say a gamer, but, you know, have you always felt that you were, you know, you like turning things into a game? Was Arena um, a new experiment, or was it something that you, you know, when you look back on your life, you're like, oh, yeah, I've been doing this for quite some time. Yeah, so so Jordan, I wouldn't use the term gamer derogatively. I think gamer no, is a no, great I thing. I hope yeah, I didn't. No. <laughs> well, you're like I don't wanna, I don't want to call you a gamer. Like no, it's fine. You can no, call me I a mean... gamer, and I'm I'm proud to say that I am a gamer. Um, <laughs> I have spent a significant time of my life playing games, enjoying games, being part of that game culture. Um, and yeah, and. As a result of that, you do see game mechanics in everyday life, and you do see the way that games can help everyday life. Um, you know, whether it's gamification, so taking things that are you know mundane and boring and gamifying them uh, to get that engagement, or gamifying them to get the the data. There's a lot of really cool things that we can do with games to to help in both school and at work, um, which I like seeing that we're now bleeding, you know, it's becoming more and more commonplace. Well, okay, so if I can jump in, if it's kind of, kind of free-flowing here. Okay, first of all, my initial reaction is, I hate games. <laughs> <laughs> there's... You know, there's you know, there's all kind of other things come into play. You know, with the, if it if it's timed, that comes in play reading and all. See, I wrestled for 14 years. I fenced, so if I can grab your ass, okay, let's play that game. But so don't. But that's a game. Well, uh, well I, I'm very curious what you don't like about games. Okay, well. Like um, well, see when I when I think about like like a Sudoku or something. Okay, so I get this thing accomplished, and then there's just me sitting there. <laughs> um, so a classroom. Whoever does this in the fastest amount of time. Okay, now we got that element, and not so much you know the intellect or whatever. All those other things come into play. But 
but here's here's where as I listen to you more, maybe I do like games in a sense of, of can you scrape this website? Now something competitive comes up. And then I see the pieces. First of all, how are the URLs built? How can I tell you Excel to build the URLs right? Um, what happens if, with slow loading web pages? All of these pieces come together, and then when this thing is working, yeah, it's like it's like having run a marathon or solved a Sudoku or, or whatever uh, for me. So maybe I don't hate games in that way, but it's these other kind of things that bother me. But anyway. I really want to get into that detail at some point. Maybe after the show, Oz, you and I should have a should have a talk. Okay. Um, a therapy yeah. session. <laughs> no, not a therapy <laughs> session. But I think that there is something. I mean, after I mean, the thing is, you know, as a game designer, my focus is is entirely about the player's emotion, emotional state as they play the game. Um, mm -hmm. And so it'd be very interesting to actually have you play test some games. And just to see, like, what it is—the okay. things that you hate about games—just as okay. a test case, I would like to see that. I think that would be okay. that would be interesting for me. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, to, to uh, jump I'm, in here, uh, one, one of the benefits yeah. of having so many children is, you know, I, I, I've seen all my kids go through this cycle. So, I, you know, I have, I have five, right? And so, twenty years old all the way down to to seven years old, and, and I just thought. I just saw something interesting in my my third grader just last week, or just the last few weeks. Um, you know, I used to hate doing homework and all that sort of stuff, but he introduced me to something that he has to do his homework on now. It's something that you were talking about a little bit earlier, Kerry. Something he has to do his homework on, where he logs into the computer and log into the computer. I don't I don't want to say it's a Facebook for kids, but it's like a a area where he has to go in, he does his math problems and all that sort of stuff and in addition to doing that, he converses with the other kids that are in his third grade class and it's something that he can't wait to get home and and be a part of. And you know, the teacher unlocks certain things that he may be struggling with, what his scores are and unlocks certain things for him to to work on that he can work on. And uh, I, I just think it's interesting that now that it's it's something it, it's in a mode that that he's more interested in jumping on the computer and it being fun and something that he's used to kind of doing anyways. And now it's not just you know him sitting down with a piece of paper and a and a pen and trying to remember these 13 words and how they're spelled and all that sort of stuff. It's just kind of a uh, the the eyes light up. You know, oh, yeah. it's a it's a cool thing. Mm -hmm. and, that's what I, and that's what I love to see, and that's how you can tell it's effective when you're getting that change in behavior and that change in attitude as well. Um, I mean, and then you also can check, you can see what's nice about having everything digitally is you can actually chart progress. So, you know, it's not just, you know, hey, uh, Rick's kid, here's a whole bunch of, uh, of homework to do. Here's 50 questions of homework, and you're going to get that all the time, right? And then, oh, you know, you come into class and, oh, the teacher checks your homework and grades it, right? Rather than that, you can actually chart out the progress to see, you know, where they're learning and what, you know, subcategories of areas that they're learning. Um, and you can, actually, you can actually quantify and see the learning in an objective manner, um, which is really great for educators um, as well as parents as well. Gotcha. So Jordan, anything else from you? Well, I'm just, I was wondering, um, you know, because I think we've all led workshops of some form or another, and I've always thought, wouldn't it be cool if I put a game in this workshop, and then I never really do, but I was wondering if anyone has, has tried that out, has done sort of a game um, in their workshops to see, uh, to really get audience participation. Well, now see, see, okay, through this conversation, I am... Uh, okay, I'm going to request a definition of gamification or game because, yeah, when I hear game initially, I'm hearing have you, you know, shown how you built a Sudoku or something in Excel, but that's very different from, say, um, nobody in the class has uh, done VBA before. All right, who wants to sit in the hot seat and build a, a um, form uh, emptier 
in front of God and everybody right up on the screen. And then when they get that and they install the button and push it, psh, whoa! Yes, yeah, so was that a gamification? Yeah, I don't know. I meant more like, you know, doing like a Jeopardy or like a multiple right, choice. Yeah, Some like. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I was wondering. You know, I always think about adding that into a workshop. Yeah. Adding... I have used um, PowerPoint, actually, to, to make a, a custom Jeopardy, which I've right, used that's what in I a couple of training doing. sessions. And it, it's cool because people do get, like, really into it and they get competitive, um, which is nice. Okay. Um, because you're just you're just structuring knowledge in a different way. I gotta tell you, I used to do um, corporate training, and in that corporate training, um, what probably made me a little bit different from most of the other people was again just kind of uh, introducing games. So where there might be in typical, typically you might just have to memorize something. I might grab people together and get them all around the floor and have uh, have underneath 16 pieces of paper. Um, different definitions and things, and it would be almost a memory game that we would play. And so there'd be just different things I would I would kind of do it to where it would make it more fun, but people would be much more engaged. So I, that, that, I found it to be useful, if not for anything anything else, just for me. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know yeah. forget those guys, man. For me, it's it's just fun. <laughs> okay. So so can you say more about how that works? I, I, uh, you said it's how, 16 papers under the chairs. Oh, uh, no, I'm just, I'm just using using that as an example. This example is 20 years old, um, but but there's right. there's been there's been a lot a lot of different a lot of different games that I've I've played with my team. So we'll say as an example, um, Oz, I know you used to be in in credit cards and working in call centers. So I used to work in call centers as well, uh, particularly in collections of call centers. And it, where you know you're trying to get people to actually collect on the phone. I mean. Who wants to be a collector, right? Nobody. You don't grow up wanting to be a collector. And so you have these people taking phone calls just all day long just trying to get your $8 payment from you, right, that you pass due on. And an example of trying to make that fun is I used to play what I'd call promise to pay poker, right? And so I'd have a team of 20 people all trying to get promises. And as you as you got somebody on the phone to promise to pay you something, you get a poker card. And I just walk around handing out poker cards. And at the end of the day, whoever had the best hand would get something. But oh, usually I was, handing out, I was handing out little little cardboard dollars with my picture on it, with little things on it, and they have, have Grantham dollars. <laughs> and we have raffles at the end of the month, you know. Right. Just that sort of stuff, and, you know. But it, 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 that sort of stuff makes the difference, you know. That's it's fun when it's particularly particularly when it's a mundane type existence type job, and and I, I think a lot of that comes through in, in different sorts of training things that you could do as well. Anything that you could do to make it fun and more interesting breaks up some of the monotony. But yeah, and we thank Carrie for, and, for showing us that Excel is not a boring tool. Right, it's not. Yeah. Now, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say if if there's anything that I want people to get out of this and the experience of, you know, making a game in Excel is that you can use Excel to do literally anything. Yes. Um yes. So anything you want to do, it's a really versatile tool. Um and I highly encourage it and I'm very I'm very much an uh, an evangelist for uh for Excel use. And um, you know, it Interesting, you know, as we were preparing for the show and talking about one thing that hasn't, as I recall, come up in previous episodes is so much the development of things. How do you put all of these different things together? And, um, you know, like Jordan Scrolly thing, right? So there's that. And then now, how do you stick this and this and this together? To where now you've got a tool or a workflow, and it's exciting that this development discussion has come up and has come up around games. Mm -hmm. I think when it comes to development, um, I try, and again, Jordan and I have have different thoughts on this one, but I try to put everything into VBA um, because it allows me to make things modular, um, so I can build certain pieces of the system and then 
when I need it to all work together, they're basically just function calls. Um, so I can I can work th through things um, individually, um, and then mm. when when the systems are working together, if there's a problem, it's very easy to go through that and debug it when it's all in VBA versus in like nested in the actual spreadsheet. I like to consider the spreadsheet as more my output rather than my my calculations or my input. All right. Gotcha. Gotcha. So now, have you? Yep. Yeah, so just one last question: Have you been in a discussion of what it's like to turn it from Excel to a game that can be on a phone or on a desktop as its own thing? Um, and if so, you know, what is that process like? I mean, it's basically recoding everything, right? VBA right. is. It's not going to work on a phone. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. pretty much what it comes yeah. down to. Uh, but the nice thing is, is that if if that's what you're trying to do, all of the design is done, and it's simply just the mechanics of taking something into one language and putting it into another language. Um, the the difference there is that when you're using Excel, you can rely upon a lot of the functions that are pre-built into Excel. You know, such as you know range lookups and you know all of the actual functionality of Excel, and you can use that in your VBA. Yeah. Um, when you're then trying to port it into an actual game, you can't rely on those functions, and those need to be coded. Understood. Understood. Yeah. All right. So, so have you talked with people about that? About porting? About uh, yeah. like taking an Excel game? Um, yeah, it's something that um, I'm actually currently playing with in um, C Sharp, uh, which is a programming language that I'm mm -hmm. using with Unity, um, which is a, a, a game engine. Sounds great. And so again, I'm... using that as that learning experience, what we were talking about before. I don't know C Sharp, but I'm doing it, you know, to, to learn it. 